Ready? Ready, Jeremy? I'd like to call the Village of Ashwaun and Park and Rec Board for Tuesday, August 20th to order. Roll call, please. Mark William. Here. Mark Estonia is excused. Deborah Lundberg. Here. Justin Miner. Here. Aideen Hatz. Here. Chris Serbel and JC Dansman are each excused. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Need a motion on the agenda? There's no corrections or additions. Motion. We got a motion and a second, I believe. All in favor of motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Comments from the public? I don't see anybody here this evening. So we'll move on to written communications. We have one. Uh, Messages for Carrie and the counselors at day camp. Just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for the energy and effort you put in this summer making the kids camp fun and inclusive. My daughter is usually one who plays independently and can most times have a hard time fitting in or making close friendships. Teachers have described her as more of a floater. Despite not knowing anyone prior to the summer, she has felt so included, happy to be there, excited in the mornings to go, and even has been able to make some close relationships. I know it is 100% of credit of this. I know it is 100% of credit to the staff running this camp. I want to thank you very much for all that you have done in making this a place where I can leave my daughter for the day and know that she is not only in good hands, but that she is loving and enjoying her summer the way a kid should be. She has made it clear to me that the counselors are a one thing about camp, but the round, but all around this program has exceeded all expectations is way more organized and keeps the kids engaged more than in any other area. She loves you all. I feel like I know some of you because she talked about you when she came home and already hopes to be back next summer. Okay, Thank you. that's one. I don't have anything else. And we passed that on to Carrie and Carrie forwarded it to all of her staff people. Okay. So it was it was nice nice to get the kudos, sure, um, for for the staff. If I'm a staff person, that that that's really appreciated. Okay. Action on consent agenda. Park and Rec Board regular meeting of July 16th and Park Rec and Forestry expenditures. Do you have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, on the expenditures, on page nine, there was 50% uh, to, I believe, the Ashwaubenon School District. What was that for? Uh, the shipping on the diving board. Okay. Uh, there was a crack on the diving board. The paint was starting to come up, um, and they they replaced the diving board for free, but the agencies need to pay for the shipping, and that was split between the village and, and the school district. Any other questions? All those in favor of the motion on the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Eight action items. Food truck rally report. Rex. Well, we did three food truck rallies this summer, and they were actually very fun to do. Um, I learned a lot about the food truck business just from talking to all the different vendors. <laughs> Bless you. Um, we had three rallies, as I said. At each rally, we had either seven or eight vendors. Uh, and then all total, we probably used 13 or 14 different vendors. Tried to rotate them in and out a little bit between um, the different events, so there would be a, a couple new ones every time. Um, we learned a lot. We learned what to do. We learned a few things that if we continue them, which which which, which will be my recommendation um, that w of what not to do. Uh, we've learned a little bit about what 
is popular, what isn't popular, and, and quite honestly, how would we we'd save a little bit more money? So, if you can get the magnifying glasses out, I know this is a fairly small uh, print on here, but I, I've tried to break it down uh, by rally, uh, rally number one, rally number two, and rally number three of what the expenses and the revenues were. Uh, please be aware, like in rally number one, um, the full soda order is on rally number one. You know what I mean? We didn't order extra soda for rally number two and three. That's why some of the expenses were a little bit higher on rally number one. Um, so you can see uh, at each rally, and, and, and granted I haven't amortized the, some of the expenses between each rally, but the bottom line is um, the three food truck rallies cost us about $741. But we, we probably had, I don't know, I, I know a number of you were all here, we probably had easily a thousand people at each rally, um, which, which was awesome. And the third one I think was definitely the most popular. Um, we had two sponsors of the events when we got going. Uh, we had Fortify Bank uh, sponsor um, the beverage tent. Uh, they, in, they had six volunteers at every rally and they helped us serve the beverages which really helped keep our staff costs down in that area. And then uh, Sherman Counseling, uh, which is right across the street here on Holmgren Way, um, they sponsored our bounce house area. Um, they paid for the bounce house each, each, uh, each rally. So that was appreciated because there were always kids at each one of the rally, um, each one of the rallies. So you can kind of see the expenses. Um, like I said, uh, we took a, we were a little bit in the red, but easily next year if we do them, um, that that will easily turn to black. Only because now we kind of know what our staffing needs are and what to do, what not to do. Um, and I can, if, if you're interested, I, I if, if you'll. Uh, Bear with me for just a couple minutes here, I'll, a, a couple thoughts. Um, we originally had a lot of family games. Um, we had, I think, eight cornhole games, uh, sets of cornhole boards put out. Um, we had uh, all kinds of different games on the tables for people to play, and they played them. They didn't need staff to lead those games, so families just wanted to do it on our own. So after the first rally, we literally, um, we, we, we cut quite a few staff people. Um, that needed that we had scheduled for the events didn't need them. Uh, when we first budgeted this in 2018, when we were talking about doing it, um, at first we just thought we'd do the food truck rally, just a plain old food truck rally. But then, as you start to really get into what other communities are doing, and then all of a sudden you get the Facebook comments once you start advertising it, and then. And then a lot of the vendors are asking the same question about, well, you're having music, right? Are you, what are you doing? We weren't plan, we didn't plan on having a music or a band at each one of the rallies. That was, that was a mistake. We needed to do that. We found that out real quick once we started to advertise and, and, and try and solicit the, the vendor. So we just bit the bullet and we scheduled uh, three, three groups. Um, and I, I did it on a, a, a rally by rally basis. Um, just to make sure that I didn't do them all at once, but to make sure that the rallies were going to be successful, which which they were, and each one kind of grew on on each on, on the previous one. Um, so we need music, and and that that is something that we'll probably try and solicit a sponsor for next year, which we didn't we didn't plan on doing this year. And by the time we realized uh, that we needed that, it was it was literally too late. Uh, the event was scheduled from 4 to 8 p.m. Um, while there was some attendance from f uh, 4 to 5 o'clock, our recommendation is to either switch it from 4.30 to 8.30 or 5 until 9. Um, just with people getting off of work and, and uh, there's a lot of people that probably would have stuck around a little bit longer listening to the band, um, you know, that at 8, at 8 o'clock that's when the music ended. So I would say at least at least a half an hour to an hour shift later into the evening is what I would probably schedule time-wise on that. Um, we did rent some porta potties and uh, some hand wash stations. Um, we didn't want uh, the, fir the first two food truck rallies. We had a special event uh, of a movie in the park, and the third one was a lake special event, which is Pirate Day with free swimming. Um, for the first two, because the lake was still open and taking admissions, we were just open late. Um, we didn't want people going in there to use the restrooms, uh, so we, we rented some porta potties. Obviously, you need hand wash stations for people eating their food, 
um, close by to where they're sitting and where they're getting their food. So we rented all of those. Um, I would probably say I just some some of my thoughts as we move forward. Um, unless we get a sponsor for the movie and the movie screen, that we probably would be better off doing the free swimming at all three events and, and just parlaying each one of those into a lake special event tonight. Um, it was more economically feasible uh, to pay for the staff for the extra two hours for the lake being open than it, than it is um, to do the movie screen and to rent the movie from Swank. Because again, we do have to pay um, a fee to Swank. It's not something you can just go to family video and rent when you're, when you're having that type of an event. Um, so I would probably say if the if we have the free swimming at the lake and the lake is then open, we don't, they don't have to check um, whether people have paid or not. Then we can eliminate the three porta potties every event. We don't we wouldn't need them then because the lake bathrooms are going to be right there and easy in and out, as well as shelter number four. Um, we have to have the hand wash stations, uh, and I would probably say uh, I, I did a little bit of checking financially of what those cost, and I need to talk with uh, some administrative staff uh, as well. But my recommendation is that we we purchase three of those and just add those to our to the village arsenal of of things that we have for events. We would we would pay for them within three years of doing some food truck rallies and because we also rent them for, for the Ashwaubenon on blast and I have a feeling there's other events we would use them at. Um, they're about 300 to 350 a, a, a unit and, and, and if we bought three of them at $1,000, we'd, we'd, uh, we'd pay that back literally within three years of not having to, to rent them, um, which is a pretty good payback because they're gonna last longer than three years. Uh, eight food trucks that talked about that. Uh, uh, we did get sponsors for, for the beverage tent. That worked out well. Um, picnic tables worked out well. We had about 40 of them put out. We thought that was a good number. Um, I would probably say I, I went to the food truck rally in Howard uh, this past weekend to kind of check that out, see how they did it. Um, they had a lot of people in chairs sitting behind the food trucks. They didn't have the amount of picnic tables, but the ones they did have, they had right there in the concourse area. Um, which I kind of like because for people who might not want to stand and wait for their food, it was a spot for them to sit while, while the food was being made um, in the food truck. So I'd probably say it's just more of a logistical thing that we'd, we'd put a couple of tables out in the middle of the concourse. But anyway, um, the beverage sales went good. Um, I mean, for, with the crowd, it, was, it wasn't crazy or anything like that. Everyone had a nice time, it seemed like. Um, soda being sold, there, were, there was beer being sold. I thought that we had a nice selection of everything. Um, and uh, as I said, next year, you know, lessons learned. I, I you know, if, if we get the same crowds next year as we did this year, it's going to be in the black. And uh, I think the people there had a good time. Did I, did I know some of you went to some of them? Did you have comments or feedback for did any of you get to make it over there? I was at the last one, and I it was interesting. I mean, first time I really ate a food truck. It reminded me of going to the fair. Kind of, yeah. They're all lined up in a row. <laughs> kind of pick your food. <laughs> and you got the music, and, and a lot of parents went there with their family, and uh, the kids went swimming, and mom and dad, you know, went and got food and listened to some music, and kids got done swimming, and they came over, and then they got food and listened to some more music and played the, the beanbag games and the, some of the other table games that were out. It was, it was just a nice little special event to get out of the house and head on over to the park for I mean, I don't go swimming and everything. I, I don't know if we need, I, how many, what was the what was the participation in the swimming? 650. At that time? Between four and eight o'clock. Wow. Entered. Which was a lot more than the movie produced, movies produced. I think we probably had about 30 or 40 for the first movie that stayed for the duration. Uh, for the second movie, I want to say we probably had between 75 and 100 people who stayed. And so the second one was, was kind of worthwhile. Um, the, first, the first night was a little bit chillier, is in the mid-60s. Um, but just in terms of financially and quite honestly how many people took advantage of this event versus that event, the, the swimming you know, was definitely you know, the better way to go anyway. Again. If we don't get a sponsor, 
that would be interested in doing, you know, the movie in the movie screen. Thoughts, questions, comments? I know everybody's doing them. I don't mind doing it. I'd like to see us in the black on it, I guess, you know. We, but we will mean, be. We will be. Um, but no, it wasn't entertaining. I mean, I enjoyed it. Good. All right. That's it. That's it. Okay. Move on to um, community center operations. <coughs> so, um, Mr. Hess had requested that uh, we just put together a little information sheet on how the community center is doing uh, to date. <clears throat> so I figured it's always better to do a full year. So uh, Sue and, and David compiled some statistics for the community center from August of last year through August 16th of this year. Um, you can kind of see uh, internal and external. Now internal permits are, are different than external permits. External permits are typically paid permits. That's a group coming in requesting to rent this room or that room for an event they have and they're paying paying us to do it. Internal permits are, are classes that we have, that we schedule. Um, it, internal permits are include the school district because they do a lot of in-service training at our, our, our community center as well as um, uh, ACT testing and, and testing to get into college and, and different subjects. So they reserve a lot of those rooms. Um, internal permits also include like uh, the Ashwaubenon VFW with their with their uh, monthly meetings and some of the service groups and the Girl Scouts that are using it and things like that. So that's the difference between internal which are kind of like at no charge for the community versus external which are paid permits. Um, so we had, <clears throat> excuse me, 300 and let's go external first because that's usually the one people want to look at right away. How much money are you bringing in? Um, external permits we had 397. That's quite a few. I mean you, if you average that that's what six or seven a week or seven or eight permits a week paid permits. So we're doing well in that respect. Um, out of those 397 387 of them of them were uh, made by Ashwaubenon residents. So there were only 10 non-residents uh, that, that took up open spaces, um, which means that it's really being utilized by Ashwaubenon residents. Um, as a non-resident, or as an Ashwaubenon resident, you can rent out up to three years in advance. And we are already getting graduation rentals, you know, three years in advance. People know that's where they want to have their graduation party and they rent it out. Um, for a non-resident, you can rent it out up to, what is it, Sue, three months in advance, right? So that really gives the residents the chance to book anything that needs to be booked. And then the non-residents are able to, you know, if, if they have something going on and, and we have an opening, we're able to slip them in, but only within those three months to, to make sure it's available for the residents. Um, the external plus the invoiced permits, which are part of the external, brought in a total revenue of 55734 So 55734 And I want to say, you know, I didn't look this up, but off the top of my head, if I'm remembering the budget, we budgeted for about $50,000 in revenue. So we're, we're ahead of the game right now in, in projected revenue at the community center of, of what we thought would be, would be bringing in. Um, internal permits, and remember, these are our classes, you know, exercise classes, morning, you know, evening, um, all the different groups, school district, um, 962 individual uh, internal permits. Um, out of those 962, 118 were community groups. 90% um, of them were, were programming. The other 10% were like VFW, Girl Scouts, um, and some of the other groups I named, I'm sorry. Um, so I guess we think it's going well. Um, 
we've had a lot of uh, comments. Uh, in 2019 to date, we've had 37 people fill out evaluations and mail them into us. I printed off all the evaluations that actually had something written on them. Otherwise, people rate us on a one to five scale. Literally, I, I, I want to say 75% well, more like 85 or 90% of them, and which makes us feel good. Um, uh, on a scale of one to five, five being best, um, the majority, 90% are probably all fives, um, which is really good. Um, but I do have some here, and I'll, I'll read some of the good ones, and I'll read some of the not so good ones. That, um, um, place is awesome to use and so in, uh, convenient. The village did an awesome job building the building. Um, front cabinets need to be wiped down more. Um, Otherwise, it was a great experience. Uh, community center for worked out great for my baby shower. However, I was disappointed with the snow removal. Had three inches of snow the night before my shower and the parking lot wasn't plowed. Well, sometimes that happens. It's a priority, obviously, to get the roads done first. And sometimes, you, you know, the, the, the parking lot did eventually get plowed the next day, but potentially not by the time that permit started. So, you know, it, it, for some, Things we, are, we, we allow for a little bit of a discount or a refund if, if it's our fault on something like that. I don't know what happened in this case, but you know that was just an, an instance of someone that had a, you know, a suggestion, but which I don't know if we can really fix that much. Other, you know, I mean, we can shovel off the, the front entryway, but in terms of the parking lot, that needs to be done by the bigger machines, and that's not going to be done until the, the roads are, are taken care of. Uh, here's here's the one that was a little iffy with, with when one of the staff got mixed up on their times. Um, they had to call to get someone there to open up the room, so they were it was about a they were about an hour late. So we credited them, you know, at that, that time, and, and and that was you know again these are a, a microcosm. I mean, out of the many permits, usually when people write something, it's something that they're not happy with. So, but I'm I'm reading them off to you here. Um, we need a double sink in the activity room. Uh, made cleanup difficult. And we've got a couple large triple compartment sinks in the Grand Park room, but the activity room, that, that's kind of what it is. It's, it's a, what's it called, a galley kitchen? There's, it, it's not a full kitchen. It's just for little hors d'oeuvres, and there's not, you know, that's not really a cleanup thing. Staff was very helpful setting up the projection screen and helping us with all the audiovisual work. Patient, kind, and respectful, very impressive. Everything perfect for our event. Lady that was there was beyond helpful. That was a nice one to get. Wish list for the kitchen. Hot pads and buckets. So that goes to the old thing of what do we provide and what don't we provide, <laughs> you know, for the, for the kitchen. Because if we provide hot pads and then we provide this and this and this, how do we kind of check off what is still there and what's what's being taken home? And, and so we, we don't provide a lot of amenities other than the actual physical facility. Um, we provide cleaning supplies and, and whatnot, um, but, but typically in terms of kitchen utensils or, or things like that, it's usually up to the user groups to bring them in. If someone's in a real bind, I'm sure the staff has gone into the, our, our pantry and helped out when they, when they could. Happy with the room size, full kitchen, ease of setting up. Um, we get so many compliments on how wonderful the place was. I hope to rent it again in the future. Second time using the facility, very pleased with it. Rented for wedding rehearsal, dinner, and wedding. All of our experiences were excellent. We love the open feeling with the windows in the beautiful sitting area outside the room near the bar area. Great addition to the community. Hope we will rent again. Uh, staff very helpful. Bathroom was not clean due to the party the night before. And this is one of the issues that we typically have, although I think we we do a pretty good job at it right now is is if there is a late night party on Saturday that goes until one sometimes those one o'clock parties go later and we're trying to move people out and sometimes people refuse to clean and just say keep my deposit we're out of here um, those people go on a list where we aren't going to rent to them in the future but that doesn't do us any good for that night 
Um, and where we get into problems sometime then is when we have an early morning Sunday rental following up on Saturday. Because quite honestly, sometimes, I mean, if, if we were to get it to where we need to get it sometimes, I mean, the staff would be there till like four in the morning sometimes. I mean, we, we can't have that. So that's why at 12, the party is supposed to end if it's a late night one. And by one o'clock, they're supposed to be out of there. That leaves that last hour for cleanup. And like I said, some groups, the majority of groups do a great job of it. What do we get to maybe three or four a year? Yeah. That, that, make, our, that make our list? Yes, I would agree. Yeah. You know, not too many, um, but it's, it's a kind of a bummer for the next person. And the person who's opening up, obviously, the next morning helps follow up and it helps clean and pick up. I mean, they all know that's part of their responsibility if they get one of those. Um, love your facility. Thank you. So I don't, literally, these are the, the ones right here that had, had written comments other than just the ratings. Um, I, I will say we just put in a set of concrete uh, beanbag boards behind the behind the community center, um, real close to the fire pits. Not so they'd be thrown in the fire pits, but <laughs> close by the seating area. Um, and we think that'll be a real nice addition during the day for people who might want to play, but especially for our rental groups on the weekends, they'll be able to check out beanbags. Um, and use them, and, and, and we don't have to worry about bringing them in and out because they weigh like 700 pounds each. Hmm. They're there. Um, so we actually put in a base form and put them on the base and got everything leveled out with our with our transit. And, uh, and uh, we're, the grass is almost done growing. We'll be able to hope the, hopefully be able to have them in use by this fall. Um, but a lot of, I don't say a lot, but we've seen a couple facilities that have them. UWGB has them on campus for their students by their dorms. And uh, they seem to be really popular. And that seems to be one of the hot things to do now in the art games. So we think those will be well used. That was just, those were just put in. So um, questions on the community center. What, what's working well, what, what might not? I mean, I, Dean, I know this was kind of your agenda item. I'm hoping that, that I, some of these questions were, you know, give you answers to your, do you thought. need to see any improvements made on the uh, rental fee policy or just the rental policy itself for the renter? Not at this time. I, I, I think, you know, we're at, we're at a, a very reasonable, we're, we're definitely more reasonable than any private venue and, and that's because, you know, the Schwabenen residents are paying for it and that's, you know, was the purpose of it is to give them a affordable place to to have their events um, is a perk of being an Ashwaubenon resident. Um, so, you know, that's up to administration, I guess, of, of whether or not they're happy with that revenue. I, I think it's, you know, it, 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 it it's at, a, at a, a nice price point right now that the residents are certainly happy with. Um, in terms of improvements on policies, I, I, we've tweaked those quite a bit in the first year or two of operation. And I think, I mean, we're happy with that. Um, Sue, you might have a little bit better answer, and so I don't want to put you on the spot, but in terms of, you know, since you're, you're dealing with a lot of people when they call and, and start figuring out pricing and things like that, what, what feedback are you getting on the pricing? Um, well, the only one I can think of off the top of my head is um, when we require that credit card, and it has to be a credit card versus debit for their um, deposit, and they're booking three years out, they have a bit of an issue with that. Not everyone, but that's one of the complaints I've heard. Um, otherwise, our policies are pretty general. You know, after the fact, sometimes we'll get some questions. Like, you know, it's obvious they're not reading closely. I mean, we tell them everything as we're handing everything to them. Mm -hmm. But um, we've had people come back stating, well, and we didn't know this, we didn't know that, we didn't know we had to be out. And like you said about the cleaning and trying to get out of there on time. Yeah, and those are all very clear. Yeah. And, and, and the staff, when they take their permits, make make that very clear. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> that it, it's not like where you go over to the mark or to the ravine or something like that, where, where when you're done, we're out of here type mm -hmm. of thing. It's like, no, it's a community center. You're, it's for the community, therefore, the type of venue it is. That's why part of the reason why you're getting such a great rate is you're helping put things away. You're taking ownership in it by mm -hmm. by helping put things away. That's what keeps your rates reasonable. And we do 
make that point that it's the taxpayers that are paying for the building. Yeah. Well, it's supply and demand. I mean, if we had, uh, you know, a bunch of people wanting the same dates and everything, and you start changing your pricing schedule so that if you're way overbooked or something like that, but I don't think you want to do that yet. Well, again, yeah, I mean, it's literally every weekend in the summer is booked and it's booked well in advance. So, I mean, it it, it gets tight in the summer. There's, there's more demand than we have hours for in that community center. But then again, it's because of the pricing and because that's what we told the residents that we'd be able to do is offer them an affordable venue. So, you know, I, I guess that's a policy discussion, you know, at some point, if, if, if anyone would want to discuss that, you know, by, by the village board uh, in, in terms of do you want to keep it the way it is and, and make sure it's affordable for the residents, or do you want to run it as a business, you know, like the Mark or the Ravine, because we could easily raise the prices, you know what I mean, and, and, and still be, you know, I mean, we're not anywhere close to what they're, they are charging, but, it, but they're the ones that are paying for the building as you know, for the next 20 years as well, which is the reason why we're keeping that pricing so low. Yeah. Well, I just felt it was important to get an update on the mm -hmm. community center because it's been a while. Yep. Okay. Would it be possible for the users to rent like hot pads or towels or, or would that be more of a problem for us? Could it be done? It, 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 sure, it, it could be done, Deborah. I, I'll be honest with you, it would be a real pain to do so. Because <laughs> then, you, I mean, you have to literally keep track of everything and then it, 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 it's always, I mean, more cleaning and there's more washing that needs to be done okay. um, and, and, and going out and ordering more and purchasing more, more items like that. Um, so could it be done? Absolutely. And, and again, and, you know, I'm at the direction of, of, of the village board of how they want it run. And at my recommendation though is, I think people are happy the way, the way we got it right now. Okay. I mean, you're, you're going to get a few people, what, what do we have? We had, I'm reaching my glasses, they're not on the top of my head. <laughs> I mean, we had, we had almost 400 paid permits. You know, and, and, and what, I, what I read here are the only negative comments out of those 400. So, I mean, I think for the most part, we're knock on wood and, and, and people can call me and let me know if I'm, I'm wrong on it, you know, that are out there that may be listening. But for the most part, I think we're doing a pretty good job of, of what we're offering and, and, and how we're treating and using the community center and what we're offering to the folks. Thanks for the update. Yep. Anybody else? Okay. Thanks, Rex. Sure. We'll move on to department report. So August is always a, well, July as well, and August are always an interesting month because the majority of the programs are going full bore in, in, in July, starting to wind down, and then the first week or so in August, they're really winding down. So pretty much everything has ended within the last week and we're just trying to recover and bring in equipment and figure out what needs, what we have and what we don't have and what needs repair, that type of thing. So the park program is done. The lake, uh, we pulled the plug on the lake actually this morning and starting to drain or yesterday I should say. Um, we wound up with the doggy dip this past Saturday. Uh, it was the last event at the lake. I think we had 300 and 87 dogs. I think that beat our record last year. I think we had 384. Um, so Melody will be doing a, a lake report in September if, if, if as long as we have other viable discussion points. So coming up this fall at some point, we'll have the lake report. Right now we have a plan for September. Um, I do want to say, uh, oh, and then right now is also project time because we don't have baseball, softball, and we have a little bit of soccer still going on by the private clubs that are renting our fields in the high school program. Um, but right now it's kind of project time. A lot of these smaller type projects, whether they be landscaping projects or park projects, uh, we get the Argonne Park playground equipment. It's actually, it'll be delivered on Thursday. So we know in the next couple of weeks we'll be tearing down the Argonne Park 
playground and, and putting up the new structure. So probably in the next month or two is really the, the heavy duty time in terms of getting things done, projects done, versus during the, the, the busy summer, it's, it's sticking your finger in the dike and just trying to, to get through the summer with all of the user groups and people using it and fixing what needs to be fixed and dragging ball diamonds and fixing bathroom sinks and, and all, all that other stuff, which is, which is a constant. Um, obviously a lot of mowing, um, but now that, now that some of the youth sports are, are, are done, um, we, we're, we're, we're making some hay, so that, that's a good thing. Um, what do we have going on? I, I would like to thank Mary Kidd. Uh, Mary Kidd uh, gave us a wonderful donation for an expression swing set, which we just installed at Clipstein Park last week. Um, we'll be calling Mary and getting a photo of, of her um, and any family member that wants to be with her on that. But we just installed that at Clipstein. And an expression swing is an adult can sit on a swing and you've got a toddler bucket right here in front of you so the adult can swing with the toddler at the same time. Um, and they, they face each other. And it, it, it's, uh, we've got one at, at Sand Acres Park. Um, and a couple of Green Bay Parks have them. And they're, they're very well received. Um, they can, they're, they're used by all, all people on the spectrum. But they can also be used and are well appreciated by, by families that may have uh, a child that has developmental challenges. Um, because on a lot of those kids, they don't uh, with a lot of those children, they don't like being swung on their own, but, but here the parent is right here with them and it's that, that closer feeling of being right there with them. Um, and it, it's worked out, it worked out really well. Um, so that was just installed um, and I'd like to shout out a big thank you to Mary for, the, for that donation, um, for that piece of playground equipment. Uh, we had some damage with the rain and windstorms um, at our lake facilities um, at, our, at our lake. Well, we lost one of the sun, luckily it wasn't the new one, but we lost our oldest sunshade at the lake. It, it got ripped to shreds. So we're actually getting some pricing on, the, on, a, on a new one um, right now on that. Uh, also, um, Tim basically had everything on hold, our, our, our village forester. Um, a lot of, lot of broken limbs and trees down in the park. So he's, for a couple of weeks, he basically was doing nothing but that. Um, so we're back on the regular forestry mm -hmm. bit, but we, we did have a, a fair amount of wind damage from those storms that kind of blew through. Uh, the fall winter brochure is to the printer, should be out uh, within probably a week or two in everyone's hands. Um, so David was working hard on that. Um, the Ashwabadon Blast, I don't know how many of you got to go to the Blast this year, but we had some great crowds at the Blast absolutely beautiful weather beautiful weather um, and and financially I know um, we are we haven't gotten all the financials yet but certainly the Alumni Association um, which is one of the main sponsors of the event um, will be able to give a couple of scholarships to Ashwaubenon high school students um, in 2020 which is which is awesome that's one of the things that the fundraising um, and the money goes to with that, we had the Kitty Carnival and, and, and the, the, the car show sponsored by Williams Auto Body and uh, you know inflatables and the rock climbing wall. And, and I want to say we, we did wristbands. We sell a wristband for $5 per, per child. And then they get unlimited games, carnival games, rock climbing wall, inflatables. And they can also get their face painted and or a balloon animal. Um, and I want to say we had. 500 and I don't know. We were we're we're probably about 580 wristbands that were, were sold for that, um, which was nice. 540, maybe I'm thinking 547. I think. So the blast turned out well. Um, Ashwaubenon Lake Lakes saw a little over 13,000 people go through the gates the month of July. It'll be interesting what the final numbers are for the lake this year because July or June was, was miserable. I'll be honest, June was miserable. We haven't had that bad of a June in, I, I, I want to say, 10 years. Um, in terms of weather, I mean, I don't think it got to be yeah. in the 70s until like late June, just, just before the 4th of July. I mean, like I said, for that food truck rally that we had in June, I mean, it was, it was in the mid to low 60s. 
for, you know, it was goofy. And the lake was was open by that point, by you know, for for at least a week. Talked about the doggy dip a little bit. Uh, Tim is doing a lot of trim, uh, tree trimming, pruning, <coughs> uh, getting to a lot of the tree cut downs and stumping, and, and you know, business as usual. Just trying to to get some of these projects done now while we've got the uh, the time to do so, and we've got some college students still on hand before they go back to school. Questions on any of the projects, programs, anything one, that's on here or not on here? One one comment. Uh, if you haven't been to Ashwaumee Park for a year or so, take a ride through there. The staff there and the crews have opened that up that the views are really nice now of the water, uh, the projects that the grants have done. Uh, Rex and I took a ride through there a couple weeks ago and uh, it's really amazing what the difference it's made in the last couple of years here. So yeah, but if you get a chance, take a ride through there once. It really is one of our, our jewels of, of our, our park system. I mean, it, it's about, what, 77, 78 acres. And I mean, right be there on the Fox River and, and there's still more things we have planned. And we're, we're trying, you know, yeah. we've got a lot of parks. We've got a lot of neighborhood parks that people go to. and. So when we got a little bit of time here and there, we like to try and go in there and and, and uh, keep trying to improve it. So thanks. Uh, thanks, Mark. Yep. The other thing I wanted to just ask about uh, our our plans and our meetings in the parks. Court meetings are done. Um, we had seven meetings already. Um, the first couple we didn't have much in attendance um, and then once we started our neighborhood special events um, we, we started doing the mailings again to the neighborhoods um, and then we included the corp surveys and information in those neighborhood meetings uh, in the mailings and then we started to get people and ideas so we've got a I've got a I don't know if it's as many as when we did it in 2014 but we probably have at least 20 or 25 surveys in our basket at Village Hall. We'll be probably taking them, I think, through the end of September. Um, and then I haven't even looked online because a lot of people when we talked to them at our neighborhood special events said they're, they're, they either have or will be filling one out online. And so, so then we'll pull all that information, compile it, and that'll be a um, probably at least a couple month project uh, for the park board to, to kind of go through some of that and start to prioritize you know, and, and update our, our five and 10 year plan. Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up is, uh, and I've talked to you about this, is the outdoor skating rinks. Mm -hmm. um, any word on that? I know that there's a couple different people that have mentioned it to me. It was brought up, I believe, at the Pioneer Park Court meeting, uh, where a couple of the residents uh, inquired about that. And I've always gotten an occasional question about, oh, we kind of missed the ice skating rinks, but no one's really had a, a movement to, to reinstitute them. Our ice skating rinks that we had at a number of parks in Ashwaubenon went away in about 2003, 2004. We had a couple of really warm winters. Um, a lot of effort was put into trying to make them viable and freeze them, and it just wasn't happening. This at the same time where the Cornerstone Community Ice Center had just opened up, and they had quite a bit of open skating over there. The decision was made at that point to do away with the ice skating rinks in the park. Um, so I think what Mark is saying is there are some people now that, a few more people than what has been asking for in the past, are interested in trying to come back with an outdoor ice skating rink in our parks again. And would that be something we're interested in? So I think that's something that, that we'll be discussing during the budget process. Um, you know, there, there needs to typically be a liner that, that's put down underneath the ice um, so that the, the mold doesn't grow between the ice and the grass. Otherwise, you will get, you will get a mold. And, um, and uh, so there's two parks that I, I think there's, it's still viable at. One of them is at Pioneer, um, which is actually why part of the reason that shelter is there. It's got that big old kettle stove, cast iron stove in there. That's the warming shed. So that's one possibility. And the other possibility is over at Smith Park um, on the northern side, um, 
right behind the, the line of homes on Cormier, you can see a, a ring about the size of this room actually, where there's like a lip all the way around. And that is still the bowl that they put the old liner in and where they were, they filled that up with water for the ice skating. Now that doesn't have a warming shed and we'd probably probably need to keep like a porta potty out there during the winter time um, if we did something like that. I guess we don't have to, but that's probably what we would do. Um, but those are the two parks, if we proceed, that I would, I would recommend that we look at. But you know, that'll, that'll be up to, again, uh, people, people's desires, if, if they want it, something like that, they really need to fill out like those corp surveys, comprehensive outdoor recreation plans and say, hey, we'd like a, an ice skating rink back at one of our parks. And then, and then that would, you know, then be able to be discussed by you guys, park board, as well as then go to village board for, you know, what it would cost and so on and so forth. Okay, I just want to make sure it got out there so that we talked about it a little bit and fill out it on that corp survey. It's online at schwabadon.com, park and recreation. Click on the survey. If you if you'd like some type of amenity in your local parks um, that's currently not there, um, that's that's where you want to let us know about it. And a lot of the projects we've done in the last five years, the picnic shelters at Waterford and Canterbury the pickleball courts at Fort Howard, the trail extension that we made over at Pioneer Park, all of those came from the corp survey comments that were made back in 2014. So let us know what you think. Anything else? Items for next agenda. Anybody have anything yet or want to see anything? If you do, just contact Rex or myself or Sue and we'll make sure we get it on there. Need a motion to adjourn. Motion Come to on. adjourn. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you for coming. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Rex.